Good readings, fellow Kerbonauts! This is Nerdy Spaceman, and we're doing another episode of A Beginner's Guide to Kerbal Space Program. In this episode, we are going to build a jet. We're going to build our first airplane. It's going to be simple design, and uh, we're going to talk about how to build the jets, what the mechanics are behind them, and uh, just some tricks and tips in building them. So first things first, we're going to unlock the aerodynamics section. And that is going to give us the liquid fuel tank and the uh, inline fuselage intake, intake, air intake, and a whole bunch of wings and stuff like that. But these are like really the two big ones that we're going to be using. And since this is science mode, what goes better with science mode than more science experiments? This is the atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer. It's a very fun name to say. Um, and that's a new science experiment that can only be run in the atmosphere. So it's like the seismic experiment, but this one can only be done in the atmosphere. So that's fun, because, you know, jets and stuff. So um, we're going to go into the space plane hangar to build it. You, we could build it in the assembly building, but to launch it, you have to launch it off the, the, the launch pad. And we want to launch it off the runway, so the space plane hangar is where to do that. Another thing that's different about the space plane hangar is it has a different kind of symmetry. It has what is called mirror symmetry, and I'll show you that in a moment. So, let's start with the Mark I cockpit. It's a cool little jet looking cockpit, so it's awesome. And we're going to slap on some scientific experiments on this thing. So, I'm going to rotate this so I have the flat open surface area part on the top here, just so I can throw some experiments on here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw on experiment there, the mystery goo, and then the, oops, the standard experiments I normally have here, I've got the thermometer, I've got the, oops, I've got the uh, seismic accelerometer, I've got the barometer, and then the new experiment, which is actually pretty big, so I'm going to have to put it off to the sides here, and I can show you guys how the mirror symmetry works. Now when you do X, You've got a symmetry, and you can see here it's a little bit different. See that it's it it just it's mirrored left and right, as opposed to being radial. Now you can toggle between the different kinds of symmetry in both the VAB and the space plane hangar by pushing the R key. Here we are. This is radial. This is standard radial. This is what we used to. When you do X, you can get multiple of them. So it's still available. You can still do the same kind of symmetry, but with R, it puts it into mirror symmetry. As you can see here. And here it is. And when you toggle X, it only has one of two. It's either single or mirror. That's it. So you can only do two things at a time. So that's good. And it's not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and throw on two of these because we're going to be having to play catch up with the experiment. So let's throw those on there. See there? They're not that heavy. And we got ourselves a science package right there on, on the front of our airplane. Now that's good. Now let's get to building the actual airplane itself. Um. We're going to go to the fuel tanks, and we're going to put the liquid fuel fuselage. And this is awesome because it has nothing but liquid fuel, so it's just like a regular uh, fuel tank. The It's the same size as these ones here, so it's got a volume of two uh, 400 units. And this one as well, the regular fuel tank, the rocket fuel tank, it's also got 400 units, but it's split up between liquid fuel and oxidizer. And you have to burn a little bit more oxidizer for every unit of fuel, so it's a little, not 50-50 split, but it's close. But you can still see here that we could get rid of the oxidizer and we got ourselves a fuel tank, but for the same size, this one just holds more liquid fuel. It would be nice if we could swap these out, so instead of oxidizer, we can do two tanks, but that's what this is for, so we're going to be using that. we get rid of that. Now, the reason we only have liquid fuel is because we're going to be using air intakes. Air intakes is going to provide our oxidizer. We're literally swimming in an atmosphere full of oxygen, so we can do that. Um, other planets that have atmospheres, if they don't have oxygen in the atmosphere, jets won't work. Uh, for example, Duna, the Mars-like planet, it doesn't have oxygen in its atmosphere, so air intakes won't work there. But there are other planets that do have oxygen, so that's good. Um, scrolling through to the aerodynamics tab, we're going to go ahead and put the Mark I fuselage air intake and if you can right click on this it'll show you that it gives you 0.6 air amount air intake for the amount um, so that's good um, this other air intake the other radial air intake that also gives you 0.6 but um, that's not it's just a different kind of air intake and I don't like it as much I think it looks uglier but that's a personal preference if you like these by all means go ahead and the cool thing is you can build like multiple of them so that's fun. These ones you have to put them in line, so it can make you think long, but 
I that's all you really need. You need about one per engine, and that should be just fine. You should have any issues. So we can go down to the engines, and we can put on the basic jet engine. And there it is, the, the pretty much the core of our plane. And the cool thing with the jet engine is, if you right click here, the ASL, the ISP, is 9,600, which is crazy. The next best thing is that Terrier, the fuel efficient engine. That one's got 345. I mean, even the Poodle also has got 350. So that's like the best we've got. But this is 9,600. So it sips this fuel like tiny, tiny amounts. So that's good. It's actually very fuel efficient. So we've got both, you know, extra liquid fuel here, and we don't have to carry oxidizer because we have the air intakes. And we've got a super fuel efficient engine. So jets are a lot of fun. They can get really, really far in a very small amount of fuel as opposed to rockets, which, you know, they they spend a lot of fuel. But they're very they're usually a lot more like powerful and they have a different role. They work in space, for example. These jet engines are very specific, they need oxygen. But anyways, enough about that. Um let's go to the utility section and give ourselves some utility, I say. I wanna go ahead and put uh some solar panels in this thing and then why not throw some batteries too there we go we're gonna throw in some batteries just for for fun there we go so we got some solar panels and some batteries just because we have SAS and stuff and it's you know it's nice to have it's not a big deal so anyways let's go to aerodynamics and in aerodynamics I'm gonna add some fins on this thing so the same fin as before um, as we use for the other rockets, I'm gonna add uh, two tail fins here you know, for uh, pitching. Pitching is when you point the nose up and down. That's what pitch does. And then we'll get one more, not two. We we'll get one, so we go single mode, and we're gonna put one over there. So that's gonna be our rudder. That's for yaw. So it's left and right. That's what that's for. And we're gonna throw on some wings on this. Now I can use. There's all kinds of wings you can use. Um, there's like the swept wing kind, and like this kind of swept wing kind, and like all kinds of other stuff, but me personally, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the basic, basic wing connector B type wing, and it's just straightforward and simple, and it's got a flat edge on the back here, and that's good because I can use the uh, elevon or aileron, but whatever it's called, and you attach these onto the wing, tip like this, and these are flaps. These are going to help us control the craft while it's in space, or space. While it's in the atmosphere, this is going to help us fly the craft around. And that's awesome. And then lastly, let's go add some legs. And that's a new utility. Some landing gears. Uh, one in the nose. Or on the nose, I guess. And then we'll add two back here. Uh, let's do somewhere like over here. I think it should be good enough. Yeah, nice and wide, so we get some area. And also, when they're out like that, the nose in the front is a little bit longer than the wheels in the back. So that's good. Because when it's resting on the on the runway, it'll automatically have the nose be pointing up, so that you know, without even having to you know, pull the joystick back or pitching up, it'll automatically want to get off the ground. So that's always good. So there we go, good to go. Now we can talk about the dynamics of how these airplanes work. Um, when you're flying, you have different control surfaces that control different parts of the plane. So when you do the Q and E keys, they roll. It's called rolling. That means in the center axis here, of through the plane, it rolls like rolls this way or the other way. It, it rolls the craft. So you're not actually changing your direction of travel. You're just changing your orientation. Um, that's the roll, and that's usually controlled by these far aerolons right here. These are the ones that control the roll. Um, so what you can do is you can right click on these, and it, you can deactivate the pitch and deactivate the yaw. And now that's what these are for. So these rudders here will only activate whenever you do the roll command. So either Q and E on the keyboard. That's the only time these would activate. So they're specifically used for that. Now you could have it for yaw for example, but that's not going to do anything because yaw is left and right. So that's pointing this way or that way if you're flying forward right now. It'll be either pointing to the left or pointing to the right. No matter which way you turn these, they won't help you either turn left or right. All they can do is go either spin you around or make you go up and down. So you can just go ahead and deactivate that. And the pitch is going to be controlled by the tail and the ones on the inside. So each one of these should only usually should only have one of the three. That's usually the best way, that's the most reliable way to do stuff. For example, if you have the pitch and the roll active 
and you want to do a pitch and roll at the same time. So imagine pushing the S key to pitch up and pushing the Q, uh, Q key to roll at the same time. Now you're giving it two separate commands. Do you want it to pitch or do you want it to roll? So which one do you want it to do? And it, and it chooses on its own. And a lot of the time they can give you bad results. So you want to isolate them. So anyways, um, we can do the Delta Deluxe here on the top and we can do yaw for that one. So we can disable the other two and yaw is going to be left and right. So this is the only one that's actually going to help us turn left and right. And we don't usually use that. Most airplanes, I don't know if you've seen, they usually roll like to the left. They roll over to the left and then they pitch up so that they'll be rolling to the left and then pitching. Instead of going up, they'd be pitching left. So that's how that works. They usually roll instead of yaw. I mean, yaw is still used, but it's just less of a uh, uh, an active use of the rudder system. It's more for stabilization. Anyways, so the, that's left with the inside ones. So when you click on these guys, we're going to use them for pitch. And these rudders back here are also going to be used for pitch. So I'm deactivating the other two. So what's going to happen is this rudder is going to push down on the tail. And this one's going to push probably in the other direction. And that's going to cause a torquing motion where the front is being pushed up and the back is being pushed down. So that's pitching up. And then vice versa. So now each control surface, that's what these things are called, the rudders and the flaps and everything, each control surface has one specific role. Either it's yaw, or it's pitch, or it's roll. So that's how they control that. And that's how uh, control surfaces work. Now we can uh, mess around with the gears. You can right click on them. For the front gear, we want to unlock the steering so that when we steer with the A and D keys, the wheel will actually turn. So that's always nice. And then for the back wheels here, we're going to increase the brake torque so that the airplane can stop faster after we land. Otherwise, brakes aren't very powerful and they won't really help slow us down. Now we can look about the core part of the aircraft, and that's the mechanics with the center of mass, center of thrust, and center of lift. These are all very important pieces of information. So like in a regular rocket from before, you want the center of lift to be behind the center of mass. So that's where this, this is. And you know, the direction of travel is forward, not up. So you want it to be behind it over here. And you want the center of thrust to be right through the center of mass. Because that way you're not causing any undue torques. So that's good. You know, it's a very simple design, so we can't mess the center of thrust. So we can get rid of that. Now it's down to the center of lift and center of mass. Now in a regular rocket, the thrust is canceling the weight. So you're going straight up. So there's no lift involved. In a plane, the thrust is only making you go forward faster. The center of lift is the thing that's actually holding the plane from crashing into the ground. So that's very important where the center of lift is in an airplane. In a rocket, so long as it's behind, that's fine. For example, if I get rid of these wings, this is going to be excellent for a regular rocket. If we grab this and tilt it as if it's pointing up like a rocket, there we go. This is a super rocket, you know, center of lift is way behind the center of mass. It's going to fly like a lawn dart, and that's exactly what we want. If we were going straight up, we want a lawn dart kind of flight. But when we're in an airplane, this is not going to be good. The reason being is you see this blue arrow here? This blue arrow is indicative of like a magic string that holds the craft up. So if you have the craft and you have it being held by a string at this point, it's going to want to tip over this way. So you want to, the mass is going to want to be below the center of lift. So it's going to just hang there. But what happens when you add some wings is that it brings it closer to the center of mass. So right here is like the best spot, right behind the center of mass. That way when this string holds it up, it's not going to want to tip over left, right, or up, down, or anything. It's going to pretty much hang level. So the wings are lifting the craft in such a way so that it wants to fly straight and horizontal across the surface. And this is a very this is, in, this is key for all plane designs. This is how you want it to look. The center of lift behind the center of mass, but still as close as you can get it. Now, what you got to be careful about is when you burn fuel, your center of mass is going to shift. See this? I don't know if you can tell. Let me zoom in a little bit. But the center of mass is actually moving a little bit. Now, this isn't a lot at all. This is a tiny amount. So that's good. That's very good. I mean, I built this plane specifically with the mass of the fuel in the middle of the craft. If we switch these around, um, let's say if we put let's go to aerodynamics and put let's say another air intake, just 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 to show you what will happen. If we put another air intake in the middle there, 
and we go and change the fuel mass, look how much more it moves. See, look how much farther it moves up and down. And that's going to be an issue as you burn fuel. It's going to change the center of mass. But that's that's fine because that's not going to be our issue because we've built our plane so that the center of mass is right there. When you lose fuel, it barely moves. So that's good. So we're not going to have any changing characteristics as we burn our fuel through flight. And this is it. We got ourselves a really cool basic plane. Now, I could do some action groups and stuff to make this flight or make this plane a lot easier to control, but I'm going to hold out on that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to add one last bit of utility. I'm going to add two little ladders here. There we go. We're going to add two of them. And then let's make sure they're pointing in the right There it is. They're pointing in the right direction. So we'll be able to hop in and out of our plane without any issues whatsoever. So there it is. We're good to go. We've got science experiments and batteries and solar panels and everything. So this is going to be a great aircraft. I'm going to call this a basic jet. Basic jet. And this should be great for flying in the next episode. Uh, we're out of time now, so I'm going to go ahead and leave. But we had a lot of fun, so this was great. This has been Nerdy Spaceman. Stay safe and fly far.